Hey guys, it's Tucker in here. In today's video, we got a fun review video because I'm actually upgrading my studio here and finally adding a NAS to studio. That is right. And the NAS we actually got is the Ugreen DXP 8400 plus Ugreen NAS. That is right. Now, I bought this myself. Ugreen did not send me this out. But the big thing here is I actually got this NAS because of a few different reasons. If you guys do not know, I have a Dropbox account I use for work that I request files for or I send files to people I work with for content creation. And I ran out of space Ooh. on that. Three terabytes. Ran out of space on it. So I could have A, bought more storage on the Dropbox, which would be like nine terabytes for $90 a month. And at that point, I should just buy NAS. And that's exactly what we did here. The first thing I want to say is this product costs a total of $699 for a four bay drives and it has two NVMe drives and also has expandable memory up to like 32 gigabytes. So that's pretty nice of DDR5 memories. It already comes with onboard eight gigs. So I will probably be upgrading that. The first thing we get to do is the actual unboxing this thing. And I just want to quickly say this box is pretty hefty. It's not like the heaviest thing in the world, but it is pretty like out there. I wouldn't say this is the heaviest like box I've opened recently. There was a super micro package I got in recently, but uh, that was not for me. We can open it from the top here, flip this on open like so, and then we can just lift it when then we get the little outer latch to the inside of the actual box. We move this foam real quick. The NAS is right here, which we can pull this on out and a box with all the extra stuff. So for our accessories, we got a few things. We got some like warranty and manual stuff. We also got the power brick for it. I know Ugreen does make their own like power bricks and stuff like that. So I don't know if this is their own or if it's just one they buy off somebody. So this isn't a Ugreen power brick, other one they probably got off somebody for their uh, device. So I thought they would have their own. We also got some additional cables with it. First of all, we got two nice thick adhesive pads for your M.2s for the two NVMe drives. I will actually be installing uh, two crucial P3 pluses in here for two terabytes. I was thinking about grabbing four terabytes because that is the max compatibility for this actual device for the M.2s, uh, but I'm just not gonna do that. Uh, we also got some screws in this package plus their own little screwdriver, which is pretty cute. I'm not entirely sure what these screws are for, but I'll look it up later here. And the last thing we got is a few cables, it looks like. So we got a RJ45 cable. I think this is Cat 6A. Usually it'll say on the cable in itself if you read the siding of it. This is a Ugreen cable too. Interesting. Okay, so it isn't like when they actually got off like the power brick. Weird. It doesn't actually say that if it's RJ, uh, what type of RJ45, it's Cat 6A, Cat 6, or Cat 5. I think it's Cat 5E, right? Uh, I assume this is a uh, Cat 6A, but I'll correct myself in post. Then the other cable we got is a, another Ethernet cable. So you actually get two of them because there are two different Ethernet ports on this. With that though, we got access to the NAS in itself, which looks pretty good. I love how the front looks. Uh, we got actually some ports to it. So on our front IO, we have a USB type C. So you can plug this into your computer or I plug in a USB C device. Uh, USB 3.2 header a ssd card slot which is so nice to see especially for me who does content creation i use a micro sd card and sd card to plug in the store stuff and just like get off my camera uh the only thing i would have liked which i didn't find a single nas on the market that had an sd card slot and a micro sd card slot if you green ever makes the second nas with for creators because especially for like content creators and people who does camera work in general you should add and micro SD card slot here. Just saying, it would be awesome. And then you have LED lights for your disc one through four, and also for your land, I know if you're working, and a power switch at the front as well. Another thing to keep in mind, when you do open the pack, it does come with a little lock, so if you wanna actually lock your bays and do so. So, uh, so we push on this like so, we're gonna actually pull out the bays in itself. We got four of them, and they are just pinching clips, so you can actually put your drive in, install it, now for the back side of our NAS, we got a few things. First of all, we have a uh, LAN port. So one of these is a 10 gig port and the other one is a uh, 2.5. So this is our 10 gig uh, LAN port, which is LAN one. And then LAN two is our 2.5, which is awesome. So if you wanna to connect to devices you can or what you wanna do for the system. Me personally, what I'm gonna do is connect this 10 gig port to my new 10 gig system uh, networking I just set up. And then of course I have a USB-C going directly to like my computer so I can use this as a direct connection to the device. I think that should work. We'll find out in a second here. We also have that nine, 19 volt uh, power for the actual power brick, a reset switch. Of course, you're gonna get to do these like a pin or something like that. They get access to that. Two USB 2 ports, one USB 3.2 like we had in the front and an HDMI out uh, for monitoring the device in itself. Now, an important thing to keep in mind, if you do wanna upgrade the RAM on it and also add a NVMe SSD, you have the access to the back of the actual 
Oh, not back. The bottom of the actual NAS. So if all we want to do get access to this is just take our screwdriver that's provided, the lefty Lucy. With that, we get access to the bottom part. So first of all, we got some laptop memory. I forget the official name for this. What is laptop memory called? It just calls it RAM on Google. Okay. Um. Well. I'm thinking maybe something else is so dense. Uh, so we of course got our access to our memory. Now it does come with eight gigs already installed. So you can change this to 32 for maximum for the version I'm using. I will be doing that later here. And you can also add two NVMe M.2s uh, support up to with a 220 80s. So that's the length. So yeah, I'm gonna install like crucial P3 process. And of course the maximum bandwidth for each one of these is only uh, four terabytes, uh, but these are running uh, gen four lanes. So if you are adding like a gen five drive, there's no reasons to actually do that. If you do wanna actually uninstall the memory though, it's really easy. All you do is pitch the clip, pops the memory on out. Uh, the memory right now they're using is uh, some Sanson DDR5. Uh, memory at what is it 4800 uh memory frequency it's not that high but then again you're not putting extremely high memory frequency in a nas and so let's just say for example you got some new memory you want to sell it all you do line up the slot with the teeth on the bottom here like so push it on down and then it'll just pinch into place so we'll just close this up for the time being now if you want to close it all you do line up the slips so take our screws and we're screw them back on down so me personally, I'm gonna install some like uh, eight terabyte WD gold drives. So if you wanna install a drive, all you do is open up your bay area, pull it on out, take your eight terabyte drive or whatever hard drive you have on hand. And what you're gonna do is slip it on in one side. And then what you do is just push on down on it while slipping on up. Once it clicks on both sides, your drive is good to go. So all you have to do is put it back in the bay and make sure that it lines up perfectly. And with that, your drive is installed. Now I'm gonna set up uh, two drives for the time being, and I'm gonna set them at RAID 1 since that's the only thing I do. I could do RAID uh, 0, but I'd rather not lose my data. So that's the whole point I got this NAS. What we're gonna do is take our NAS. I'm gonna take my 10 gigabit ethernet cable I have here and I'm gonna plug this into the LAN one, which is of course a 10 gig. Then we're gonna take this uh, USB-C and plug it into the front. Grab that USB-C cable, plug that on in. The next thing we have to do is just power in our power and we're good to go for this device. Now what we have to do is power on the device. We're good to go from there. So what should happen if everything loads up properly, it should locate the two drives on three and four bay. So our drives have been noticed, which is awesome. So what we have to do is now connect this on the network. So once you have the NAS hooked up to your switch or your network, all you want to do is go to this page here and just click on uh, download the Windows installer file, which I've already done that for yourself. And you want to run this. When you run it, it will say register a new device. So we're going to click on this. It's going to look on your network to find your device. You can see here is my Ugreen NAS. We're going to click register. Once it registers, it's going to click the agree the tournament, start. And then we can name this whatever we want. We can give it an administrator account. We'll just call it uh, G-Man for the time being. And all we want to do from here is click next. Okay, so it's finally set on up. So all we do here is click start. And when we click start, we can actually just skip all this stuff. We are gonna set actually a volume for a RAID. So we got two eight terabyte drives. Right now it's actually on Chinese for some reason. Okay, weird. So we're gonna create, uh, we're gonna start. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a RAID. We're gonna say RAID one because we only have two drives. For the hard drives we're gonna select, we're gonna click on three and four. And then with that, we do, we do a drive test to make sure they're good or not. For the time being, I am not going to do this because they're not damaged. I know for a fact because I was just using them recently. I cleared off the information on them. So what we're going to do is click next. And then of course, these are uh, eight terabytes. So RAID won't allow us to have two drives. If one drive fails, we'll still have the data backed up onto another drive, which is perfect. So we're just going to click next. And then we're gonna click done and then it's gonna format these and it's gonna wipe up any information on the drive so yeah if you're saying i'm an ass just keep in mind any drives you use on the nas will of course have their data completely wiped so i made sure to transfer everything beforehand so with that we're gonna create this pool okay so the pool has been created which is awesome which you can see here are eight terabyte drives are in raid one which is really nice to see so we can leave that as this for the time being i thought i'd just go over some cool things so if you want to use that uh, sd card slot install like a card from your actual camera so i'm gonna do that here i have a 250 56 card on hand i'm just gonna plug that into my nas and of course when you actually plug it in it should just automatically recognize this device so if you want to go now to your file manager and grab stuff off your camera ssds you can actually just do it from here which is pretty awesome to see and the good thing about this is a usb not usb 3 uh this is a, a 3.0 ssd card slot so this thing is really fast when it comes to opening nice 4k footage or just anything in general so you can see here like load it up pretty quick uh this will especially be faster if you do increase the amount of ram on it but you can see my bed and stuff like that in the hallway it works really well and then you can just add these footages onto your actual uh 
uh, NAS if you want to. If you don't want to, you can just unplug the thing and then you can put it back into your camera and get back to work. So that's really nice. I was expecting the SD card slot to be fast, but this is faster than all the ones I have on hand besides the one I use for the uh, Mac mini. Besides that though, you can do some other stuff with and the file manager and shared files. You can of course share files with people. So let's say if I have a file here, I wanna go to my anime reactions, I wanna share something with somebody, I can lay this right click on this click share and i can share within uh this device or i can share with external device my only problem with this is is i would like this to say share expiration time to be never so that way like if you want to share a file with maybe some people who are paying for something for a service they never have to wait for it expire or if it expires it'd be kind of annoying so if being it said that never is would be awesome unfortunately it's just not the case you can enable a password if you want to but if you don't want to you can just click okay i'll create a link and you can then share this link with people who want to download the file so let's say you have some people or consumers that you have edited the file for you need to send them the file you can send them this link and they can download it for themselves for example here let's just paste that link on in here it's going to open it on up and then you can see it's going to connect to the nest and be like hey do you want to download this file of course it's just kind of an example file i was doing some uh, exporting tests because what i did here was i was able to add the actual thing onto my domain so if i actually go to the files here and if i want to go to uh, personal files or just uh, shared files you can see i have this one called vids and this is where i export my videos for youtube for uh, i haven't exported anything in here yet because i'm still sitting on up but i have it already set it so if i right click on here go to properties go to my domain users and you can figure out who you want to give access to and you can either block access from certain people you can give them read and write access or read access only but once you select them you just check it on off whatever you want and you go from there and then all you have to do is go on your domain and then make sure they added on your pc so for me i've already added on this pc so if i go here you can see vids it's the same one from here so now i can export videos to there which is pretty nice and it's pretty cool you can do you can also set the volume so if you don't want to give like all the storage to this other folder you can set the amount uh, for me personally, I don't particularly care about that because I just want whatever folder to have no limitations. So luckily that's not restricted uh, to not being there like compared to the third day one. I wish the whole share files just never expired. That's the one thing I want you green to change. Another thing, a cool feature, I feel like that would be really cool if you could invite people onto the NAS and just have them like watch the files via link. Uh, because you can actually invite users onto the NAS in itself by going into a uh, control panel with a control panel you can go to user management and then you can either add a user invite a user and if you invite a user they will uh you can send them this link and you send them this link if you send them this link you will get an invitation to the actual nas so you could like say hey register your account it can be literally anyone and once you've actually registered an account for example you like you have all you do is go back in here for the person and then go into actually domain device connections and you can go to remote access and you just copy this link and you just paste it on in here. So let's say, for example, here you invite your friend, they make an account on this, they sign on in with the link you send them here, and then that way they can have access to it. Now, you can restrict what they can do on it, which is really nice. So just in case you're inviting somebody you don't normally have on your domain, or maybe he's not your friend, maybe he's just a coworker, and you don't want them to have access to your whole NAS. What you can go do in device manager is actually restrict what they can do. So, uh, for example, here you can also create groups that do the exact same thing. So I have this one group for my Patreon, for Patreon members, where they have certain permissions, so they can only read, but they cannot read or write or do anything special with it, so they can't delete files. So they can still watch the files though. And for coworkers I have that I invite, they will be able to also read and write files and also just like not access certain files either. So if I don't want them accessing this, they can have access to that. You can change what you want with that, which is pretty cool. That's what I really like about the NAS, how much restriction and unrestriction you can give to certain individuals. So the next we're gonna do is do a render test onto the actual NAS. Now keep in mind, I will recommend actually getting some SSDs for the NAS because what I'm gonna do is get some uh, four terabyte NVMe SSD so I can install both of them into the two empty slots below the NAS because right now I don't have anything installed for fast storage because what you can do with those NAS theoretically is actually have two uh, drives NVMe drives as caching drives maybe one for just fast storage another one for just caching and that way you could write the video to the actual NVMe drive and at a certain period of time if it doesn't get used it'll then remove it to the hard drive so that'll make it faster just for like transferring files or rendering out stuff onto the actual NAS right now we're just using hard drives so we're gonna do I have this video I just made recently which is gonna be making my new 
10 gigabit network, which of course I have that video link down below if you are interested at all how that works. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we can actually export this file. And now that we added the NAS onto our computer as a output file for where we wanna uh, export files to, we can do that. So we're gonna see here, we can see our NAS here, anime reactions, we're not putting it in there, of course. We're gonna put it under uh, vid because vid is where I export my files to. Uh, and there we go. And now we can click uh, render. And of course, this is not like a super big file just because of the fact that uh, there isn't really much going on in this video, but you can see right here, even with it out being a super big file, it renders pretty quick. There's also a caching drive on this too for flash, it's like 128 gigs of flash drive. I don't think you can switch it out. You might be able to, but I didn't see it when I opened up the bottom of the thing, probably in the internals, but I'm not really gonna go too crazy with messing this. Now this file is export, we should be open the file. It should open vid right here, which is awesome. And we can actually open. So it did export perfectly fine, which is awesome. It did do all six minutes and it actually exported real quick without any quote loss in quality. Cause that's my biggest concern when I export to an ass is like, am I gonna lose the file? or am I gonna lose a thing of quality? Usually that will never happen unless like your internet's very, very unstable or that your just internet's out for the day when you export doesn't export anywhere, it just goes to the abyss. Now, just for example here, let's show you guys if you actually want to drop a file. So I got this 7.7 .7 gig file from Apex Legends recorded gameplay. We're gonna drop this in vid. All we do is paste this on in here and we see how quick it actually exports to the actual NAS in itself. Now, this is pretty quick, but once you start getting SSDs and NVMe drives in here, it'll be way better. I'm not entirely sure if you do 2.5 SSDs instead of the actual hard drives, the hard drive bay. I'd be kind of curious if that that's actually the case. That'd be cool if you could, but honestly, it wouldn't really make so much sense to if you have uh, two NVMe slots. So you can see right here, this alone is absolutely just crushing. That's almost a gig file. Like it, it, it did it pretty quick. Just imagine now when you get the actual N.2s in there, that'll be so much better. And then it just caches it on off later to the hard drive. So yeah, that works really, really well. Okay, so it's been a few days now that I've been using the Ugreen app. I kind of want to go over my final thoughts now on using it. First of all, I just want to quickly say things I love about this NAS so far is that the ability to just give access to users to use the NAS when they're not actually connected to the network. That's pretty nice, for, especially for me who hires people for video editing. I can literally just say, here's your username and password, limit what permissions they can do with it, and then they can just start working off of it. So that's been pretty nice. And now, of course, the render speeds for actually rendering to it has been very good. I'm actually like rendering out something right now. I'm able to do the background without having to worry about it. So. That's a good feeling. Uh, the other thing with it is, is I will probably be installing some NVMe SSDs on it. Now, originally I was gonna grab like two terabyte crucial P3 pluses, but I think I'm just gonna grab four terabytes and just max out the NVMe drive spots just because why not? Because they're gonna be great for caching. And also you can just use them for additional fast storage too, if I really want to. Uh, so yeah, it does give you the option to actually select SSDs, but if you don't have any in there, it's not gonna give you the ability to do so. But when it's do do it, it's gonna be way better especially on a 10 gigabit LAN port yeah it's gonna be blazing fast because we rendered out something within like 40 was it 46 to 48 seconds right so when we actually have the NVMe drive install it'll be pretty much within a few seconds at that if I'm correct but I'll have to test that more I might make a full follow-up video in like three months giving my honest thoughts and opinions on it to say if it was actually worth it or not so yeah so far those are my things that I love about it so far the only problems I have with this NAS is that the ability to share links and files to people you can only do it for up to 30 days I want them to make it an ability that makes set it to never it'll never expire the link that'd be nice uh, the other thing with it is too if they make a future version of this NAS or an upgraded version make sure to add not only an SD card slot but a micro SD card slot because i'm probably not the only one who thinks there should be a nas on the market that has both of those access to them like in all fairness you could just hit, hook up a um a usb 3.2 uh, adapter to actually usb uh not use uh, sd card to micro sd card slot you could buy one of those hook it up that way but i feel like if you're spending 699 dollars i feel like it was possible to add a micro sd card slot because if you got the actual sd card sd card lanes right there you should be able to slap on the top one but who did I know? No, I don't know how it works and all the end of the day. I just know either way, this is a very good product. Uh, so yeah, I just know I cannot wait to max this thing out. I'm going to slap in two four terabyte NVMEs and I'm going to probably max out each of the drive bays because they support up to 24 terabytes of actual storage per lane. And so that means you can slap in a total of 104 terabytes if my math is correct. So I'm definitely gonna do that at some point, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed my honest review here today, make sure to smash the like button, get subscribed to some of some future tech content here, and maybe we'll make a follow-up video to see how I actually like it within three to four months from now. But yeah, I'll see you on Tech Grant out.